Friday. Hi everyone. Welcome to Aggie Horticulture Live. Um, this is our, today's segment is indoor plants. Uh, welcome and as you come in, as you join us, would you please put your name in the chat box and any questions you have, put those in the chat box as well and I'll try to address them throughout the session and please know there are Aggie Horticulturists, Extension Horticulturists, uh, also watching that um, we'll be answering your questions. So who am I? I'm Fran Pontash, a program specialist with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension in viticulture. So I serve the uh, grape growers, 99% of them are wine grape growers, and uh, vineyard managers in the Gulf Coast region. So why am I doing indoor tropical plants? Um, that's because, like many of you, most of you, I imagine, we've spent the last two months in our homes, stay home, that was a directive, um, with indoor plants. Um, so I wanted to pay homage to the guys that have been keeping me company for the last two months. But I also wanted to show you a house plant that is also a grape. This is um, Cissus rhombifolia. It is in the family, the grape family. And uh, that's because it's got these tendrils. So it will grab, those are tendrils, they're little feelers that twist and grab on for support. And this is a very popular house plant, hard to find, very hard to find, very rare. Uh, but Bill McKinley, our interior um, plant lecturer and floral design, Guru, he has these in his greenhouse, in the A&M greenhouse. So by the way, a lot of these are from the greenhouse, his greenhouse. Some of them are my favorites from home that I brought up to show you today. Um, but folk, most of the duration they've been in my home. Let me put this back that looks a little bit prettier and get on with it. So indoor plants are either container grown, as we'll discuss here in my office, um, or um, those are their house plants, um, and or as part of a landscape in what we call interior landscape, where they're actually planted in and um, part of the building design. And we'll go down and look at our atrium. I'm in the um, horticulture building right now of Texas A&M University um, and uh, in College Station. So. What these guys are, are succulent plants native to the tropics or the subtropics. So that means that they appreciate and thrive on um, constant temperatures between 60 and 80 degrees. Uh, they don't like the cold, they don't like the heat. They like it fairly constant. And that's why the best place for them are either on your back porch, in your patio, not in the direct sunlight, or within, in your home in direct or indirect sunlight. So I, oops, I do have one here that got burned. That is burned. I took it out too soon. It wasn't quite warm enough. It's not uh, sunburn. It's, well, it's a combination of sunburn. And, wow. Okay, Danny says to speak up. So Danny's my videographer today. And Danny Hillen is viticulture program specialist for the High Plains and, and uh, West Texas. So we're both great people, but we've been inside a lot, just like you. So these leaves were burned. They're very tender when they're inside. I put it outside on the porch. I thought it would like uh, some extra light and was a little harsh, but you can see it's growing out of it. Um, so light, 60, uh, temperature 60 to 80 degrees. Humidity, they love humidity. About 80%, not a problem in College Station or Southeast Texas, not a problem for us. If you're tuning in and you're in areas where it's a little drier, you should probably mist your plants a couple times a week um, and then keep the humidity level up. They really do respond well to humidity. If not, they'll start getting little uh, necrosis on the margin. The margins will brown. The edges of the leaves will brown. Um, soil, they all like loose, well-drained soil, whether in a container 
or in a landscape, um, interior landscape setting, they do need loose, well-drained soil. And there's tons of good potting soil available in, uh, wow, I have to speak up even louder. I don't know that I can. I'll give it a try. I hope you can hear me now. Okay. So <laughs> You're gonna have to yell. I'm gonna have to yell. Okay, that's kind of counter to my nature, but I'm gonna do it for you and for these guys. Um, so where was I? With soil. So there's lots of good potting soil. You can start out with a generic soil and go from there. Um, just as long as it's well drained. It holds a little bit of moisture, but sometimes like, well, that would depend on where you are. If you're in a drier area, you might want a soil that contains moisture a little better, but here we need well drained. Um, the pesticide, I want to go through the issues of, of plants. Um, pests are not that big of a problem in, in these indoor plants. We have spider mites, we have mealybugs, and scale. Those are all members of the mite family. So they can all be pretty well taken care of in the same manner. These do not have any. Uh, we do have some downstairs, I'll show you but they do not have any of those. And then as far as rot goes, the primary rot problem is uh, root rot, and that's from overwatering. So that makes it really simple. Maybe not so easy to master there, but very simple to work out. So I wanted to show you just a minute what I'm used to, and that's a whole book of disorders on grapevines. And then another whole book on how to take care of those disorders. So this seems like, this is really nice and it contributes to the peace and well-being of your home when you can narrow, narrow it down to a really small uh, problem level. Um, over, so that what that means is it boils down, if you have any problems with your plants, it's usually boiled down to two things. It's either you've overwatered or they don't have adequate sunlight so it's either light and water but either way you know it's one or the other usually because those are the key ingredients to photosynthesis so with these plants what we want is foliage so they're like they're like artwork when it comes to leaves so many textures and colors and shapes and we want them for the beautiful leaves and the, the design they add to our setting. So in order to have healthy leaves, they need sunlight and water to keep photosynthesizing, which they're doing. So um, it's important to get the water and the soil, and the, oh, I got distracted. <laughs> what goes in photosynthesis? Water and sunlight, okay. So that is broken down into another simple subject, and that is the plants that are chosen for um, interior plantscaping or landscaping. There are, there are few families that are used. One of them is the fig family. This is a very common plant. This is my guy from home. It's uh, usually grown as a tree, a ficus benjamina. Um, very, very common. This lights medium to medium light. Put it in your window. But this is also a ficus. This is a fiddle leaf fig. So it's also a ficus. Same family. And then, then we have a rubber tree. This is a variegated rubber tree, ficus elastica. So they all have their kind of growth habits and what they like in common. Uh, what suits one should suit pretty well suit the other as far as watering and sunlight. Um, and what I do for these, and for all of them actually, is give them a twist, put them in a window away from any air conditioning draft, away from a draft from a open door, especially in the winter. You don't want a cold air blasting on them. Um, that dries them out, dries out the humidity, not the soil, but it, it um, uh, lowers the humidity. So what you do is you just rotate it every two weeks for every month because plants are phototropic. So 
So if they anywhere the sun, they be all growing toward them. Um, and so you just twist them around so it's even. Some growers will use that twisting to make a design out of them. And uh, living sculptures, really. It's kind of like living artwork. So those who are, are figs, they do like um, moderate wo uh, watering. Uh, let them dry out just a little bit so they're almost dry. That's basically the concept for most indoor plants, is let them be almost dry, but not completely. They're much better off getting slightly dry um, before watering than um, keeping them extra moist. And these guys, They'll put out roots from the bottom when they're ready. They'll tell you when they're ready to be repotted. So just let them be. And if you see any roots coming out of the bottom, you know it's time to repot them. Let's see, what's another family? Uh, we have Dracaena. Well, I have to move this awesome Everlife sign. Uh, we have a Dracaena Masangiana. This, uh, and then, oops, six feet. Okay, and this is Christina Martinana. Woo! Okay. <laughs> and this guy, you're from a different family. You're not on yet. Get back. Here's another Christina. Can you see me? A reflexa. This is a reflexa. They all do well in relatively low light. They're also related to the Janet Craig, and believe it or not, Sansevieria. This is a Sansevieria in the same family. So they all um, adapt well to a lower level of, of light. And their roots, um, they can make a few tap roots, but they don't have a real big root system. So don't over pot them, get in a bigger pot than they need or um, let them sit and water and rot. So I'm going to move this guy for a while. This is another family uh, for the Shefaleras. This is a Shefalera arbicola. These are your trees down in Florida, Bahamas. And then a philodendron family, pothos ivy, golden pothos, wonderful in lower light. Um, these things are magnificent and the perfect plant for uh, a neglected spot or a beginner because uh, if it gets too thin you can just pinch them back and they'll bush up again just pinch that off remove it and that forces them to be bushier um, let's see what else I think that's it we have some bromeliads, colanchos, but those aren't really what I wanted to focus on as far as ease in learning. So just learn how a few types grow indoors, and then you can expand your um, tapestry to other, include other species. So it's time to move downstairs and look at the atrium, but I gotta get this guy so he doesn't fall over. Let's secure him. You gonna stay put? No. He's so big. So this is one. Um, uh, let me show you this guy. Actually, this is a good candidate for for repotting. <laughs> That's what I mean about roots coming out of the bottom. This guy needs to be repotted. But he's usually spends his day in the greenhouse, perfect environment, so it doesn't quite kill him. Uh, well, it doesn't kill him at all, and it's beautiful. But growing them indoors is artificial to their nat natural habitat, so we need to be very cognizant of overwatering and getting enough light. The two key features. Okay, please stay. Got it. All right, let's go downstairs. So, we have a little bit of a trek down this hallway, horticulture building, horticulture extension wing. It's usually very noisy and chatty because there's people here. We're a very chatty bunch. 
it's very quiet now. But I wanted to bring up the topic of water, what kind of water. I like to use a rainwater for my own plants. This is a college station. We have very poor water. If you have better water, then that's great. You can just use tap. Downstairs, we have to use RO water. Hey, show sure. That's Bill McKinley. He's the manager and brains behind our atrium. So, let me catch my breath. I don't usually walk and talk so much. So loud. Um, so we have a, a backstage view of, of how the interior scaping is, is designed in our lobby. This is our showcase, and uh, it's, it's what it looks like when we don't have students, we don't have floral design sitting on all those white cubes, so the display cases. We usually have, um, Bill puts his collection of art on there, vases. He's put all kinds of wonderful artwork, and he usually has them displayed. So when you walk into your, our building, it's more like walking through either a art gallery or a museum gallery. So it's a very interesting place. And the students come over here and look at, um, they sit on those seats, and uh, it's chock full of students usually. Um, they're all over the place. A lot of times spilling onto the floor. So let's go take a closer look, and I'll really. So over here on on Danny's left, if Danny would zoom in on our mealy bugs, this is Chevalera actinophila, uh, come an umbrella tree. We have scale here on those leaves. That's what scale looks like. It's not moving much. It's, um, it ends up killing. It excretes that honeydew all over the place. And over here we have some mealy bugs. They are both mites, just like spider mites. They're mites. They're not true bugs, they're mites. And they get all over. See, look at them on the stem. Maybe that's a good one. These are the adults. And so there's two ways we can take care of that. One is to just chop it off. Chop it off, throw it away before it continues to infect. Or we could use some neem oil. And I have some here. And um, I've got diluted it. And you just spray it on, but you, it's best to physically wipe those guys off. That, that takes care of it longer. Otherwise, you're spraying. Then spray every two weeks or so to retard any um, reinfestation so that they don't come back. So then you, you keep spraying so, so they don't come back. Let's get away from the, the blower here. Um, but to begin with, to get the adults off, you physically have to wipe them off uh, and remove them. So in this building, it's great light. You can see that there's um, beds. The beds line all the windows. And um, the plants that are selected in each bed are chosen based on their uh, similarities in growing habit and light. Uh, requirements. So again, it's all about water and light. So we have Sansevierias that are still in their pots, and then these other plants that are planted directly in the soil. It's very loose. This is more like mulch. Down a little lower, it's a very thick uh, cover of mulch. Then um, as we go through the light increases. We can use other plants that maybe can tolerate or thrive better on uh, more light. Here's a Dracaena. This is Dracaena tricolor. And I think those might be, no, I don't see any. But this is, if you look on the back leaf and you see tiny little black specks, these are famous for getting mealy, or spider mites. But the way it's modeled, I believe, it's been, they've been wiped off already. They've been cleaned. 
but that modeling is what spider mites leave behind. Um, I didn't talk about aglaonemas and diffenbachias, the arums. Arums, the arum family, are spathophyllums, are closet plants, and are diffenbachias, aglaonemas. Um, see these diffenbachias in the back? These will be replanted uh, and put something else. They've been in here so long they've become leggy. That means they had a re they had a really good life. Um, they've been in here a long time. They have these calyxes. This one is dead, but that's the flower, like a peace lily or your closet plant, <clears throat> similar. Um, and this is what they look like uh, when they were first planted, very colorful. Um, now they've gone more green. We didn't talk about bamboos. Uh, what we have here is a raphis palm. It's the hardiest of all the palms. You want a palm that's not going to lose its leaves or get diseased, that would be a raphis palm. Requires little care, just keep the leaves clean. That helps with the photosynthesis and then uh, moderate water. Uh, some of those other palms that you see in the store, especially like an areca palm, that is good for a short time. I call those my short term rental plants. I used to have a plant company and I would lease them out for conferences, weddings, that kind of thing. And areca palms always lifted the mood, but then I knew I had to take it out, which was fine because it has such a short life. They get um, spider mites and um, lose their leaves just way too fast. So palms, use them as a minimum. Here we have a prayer plant. And uh, these guys are actually blooming. Take a look. We have some flowers. So all these are flowering plants, but since we grow them for their foliage, a lot of times people will pinch off the flowers just so the energy can be directed to their beautiful foliage. But you see all the textures and everything, how they work together. Over here we have the money tree. We have more, more of these. Um, gosh, I forgot the name. But they are a type of Diffenbachia. Dwarf Dracaena warnicae. And our, our, our sunburst marginata there. Um, so these are all more tolerant. Is this a sound good? Can y'all hear me? Okay, good. Um, because the fountains are in here usually and the atmosphere is really calming. It's a very calm, peaceful place to be and I can see why the students hang out here. Um, it's, right now it's just the way it is. The bare, bare bones, like I said. Just show them the, the funny sculpture we have. Wall hanging. Just a kind of a, an idea of the little weird art we sometimes get in here that go well. Somehow it all works together really well with the plants and the light. I want to show you the ferns because it is the season for all of them. Ferns are not true plants. They are ferns and they don't have seeds. They have um, these spores on the back of their leaves. So some people might think they're dirty on the back. But they're not. They're about to release spores. They're forming spurs, spores, and they can release some. these as well. Look at all those. Some of them I've opened. And are made in here fern. These really like humidity. Look at the rabbit's foot. This rabbit's foot fern. Big roots are made in here fern. I mean, this is a made in here fern for bird nest fern. They can be a little tricky, but as long as they have humidity, they'll do great for you. And then we have some more um, of the same things we saw upstairs. So these, these are very, uh, they can be versatile as long as the water and the light is consistent for them. They can be used in so many settings, depending on the look you want. We have our big shuffalera, more rubber trees, Dwarf Shuffalera here, 
commutated. Our aglaonemas, the commutatums here, very good for low light. These are excellent for low light, but they do get leggy. And then our Dracaena warnicae. And um, I think that's it. I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning off these mealybugs and scale. Um, there any questions? Oh, has everybody got them? They're being answered. Okay, awesome. I have an awesome team behind me, guys. Awesome team. Now I'm going to put on my gloves and clean these. And I bid you adieu. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye.